If you go off the beaten path to Verendre, you'll see remnants of a town whose people dreamed of a brighter future. Located northeast of Velva, it's a stretch to even call Verendre a ghost town. What remains is a crumbling brick schoolhouse and a lonely gravel road that passes the farm of David and Joe Ashley, the only two inhabitants left of what used to be a stop for the Great Northern Railway to refill their mighty steam engines with water. Originally called Falson, residents changed its name to Verendry in 1925 to honor the French explorer Pierre de la Verendry, the first white man to have explored North Dakota. Verendry is a special place because it was where people worked together to create Verendry Electric Cooperative and we're standing right where it all started. This is the little town of Rendry. We're northeast of Velva, five miles. It's right on the river valley, beautiful community, right along the railroad track. And guess what? These folks needed power. They approached Ottertail Power Company. Hey, build us a power line from Velva. Ottertail said, there's no way. that We can't get a return on our investment. So they did it themselves. And it started with the Blacksteads. They owned the elevator here in town. They needed electric power to run their elevator. They were the driver that started the co-op. You know, Verendry used to be quite a, uh, quite a, a little railroad boom town at one time. There was two elevators, there was the bank, a corner store, a cafe, a bar, quite a boom, booming little town. And there was several people in there and involved with the whole community. Now there's just my wife and I left there and it's, it's kind of sad to see that way, but that's the way a lot of these towns go now, you know. And, I'm proud of the heritage I've got. My ancestry was involved with the Verendry Electric, you know, in, in a lot of different respects. And it's, uh, it's really uh, quite an honor to, to be living there now and, and have that ancestry with it. In the late 1930s, a group of farmers, led by grain elevator manager H. H. Blackstead, began working to bring electricity to the area. The solution? To start their own electric cooperative, because investor-owned utilities wouldn't serve rural areas. After President Franklin D. Roosevelt created the Rural Electrification Administration, or the REA, by executive order in 1935, which provided low-interest loans to build electric systems, work on rural electrification began. Rural electrification was more than providing a service to people. It was a movement aimed at giving rural people a better life the same life their city cousins had been enjoying with electricity for decades. The implements that you could get in the, in the household had to be a boon to the, to the farming people because they didn't have anything like that, especially in the, in the barns. They didn't have any power. They had to use uh, lanterns there too when they were taking care of the animals. So uh, it, was, it was a difficult time for the farmers. They just didn't have the power, and didn't, and that's what really changed their lives. They, they put up a yard light and never turned it off when they got power. You could see that happening. They were pretty proud of having power in their farm. It was uncertain whether Blackstead and other organizers would succeed. First, they had to go door to door and ask people for $5 to become part of the cooperative. New signups also had to agree to pay a minimum of $3.50 a month for 40 kilowatt hours of power, an amount an average household today can easily use in one day. But the co-op did succeed. Uh, trying to th I would go with him on occasion, and we talked to the farmers, and they were hesitant, very hesitant. Number one was the $5. They didn't really know if they wanted to give away five dollars or something pie in the sky, and they didn't really believe that they'd get the five dollars back if the 
co-opted and uh, materialized. On January 26, 1939, North Dakota granted the Articles of Incorporation to Verendry Electric Cooperative. The first meeting of the Board of Directors was held February 15, 1939. The co-op's first headquarters was an abandoned bank in Verendry. And it hadn't been used for since the bank way there. You can't imagine how dirty that was when they went in there. But a bunch of gals and guys got together and scrubbed the whole building. They found out that it was, the ceiling was white when they got there. It was just that dirty. Most line workers trained on the job and did not have the luxury of bucket trucks to hoist them into the air. The first holes were dug by hand, some even by children. Finally, on June 27, 1940, the switch was thrown and the first 35 families began receiving power. In 1941, the cooperative moved its headquarters to Main Street in Valva. In 1957, the co-op relocated again to its present location on the west edge of Velva. As the co-op continued to grow and grow and grow and grow, it became obvious that a location on a highway would be a better headquarter town. That's why the co-op moved from Brendry into the We Velva. now serve in eight counties. We have 4,800 miles of line, 15,000 members. Seemed logical to, uh, to move it to the next biggest town. Although skeptical about electricity at first, once people saw the benefits, signups quickly increased. Most people started out with only a few outlets, and the most common appliances were refrigerators, radios, and lights. We, we got power in, New, in uh, Minot in 1948, in the fall of 1948, and it was absolutely the most wonderful day of my life when we got that power on, on, uh, in our place. I had gotten a, an iron for Christmas, and I'll never forget how we put that iron to work. And I think I ironed all afternoon. And it was so much fun to, to put into, you know, into use the things that we dreamed of one day. A washing machine, got a new one of those. Got a refrigerator that worked without, with electricity. And we had a stove, an electric stove, but it had a uh, wood-burning factor to it as well, in case electricity went out. Soon, the cooperative began encouraging people to purchase more appliances and to use more electricity. As the need for more power grew, Verendry leaders became tired of paying high prices to an investor-owned utility for electricity. So, they decided to build their own power plant. In 1949, Verendry Electric and other cooperatives formed their own cooperative to generate and transmit their own energy. In 1952, this co-op, Central Power Electric Cooperative, completed the William J. Neal Power Plant in Voltaire. In 1985, the Neal plant closed due to a demand for even larger power plants. Verendry and other cooperatives would later form Basin Electric Power Cooperative, which now serves 2.8 million cooperative members in nine states. Another important milestone for Verendry Electric is its long-lasting relationship with the United States Air Force that began in 1951, when the cooperative began serving a small radar base south of Minot. In July 1955, Verendry signed a contract to serve the Minot Air Force Base. Today, the Air Force is the single largest user of electricity in Verendry Electric's membership. Verendry's relationship with the Air Force grew even stronger in 2011, when the cooperative was awarded a 50-year contract to own and maintain the electrical distribution facilities there.
The 1980s brought two of the cooperative's largest members, the Dakota Square Mall in Minot, and the Midwest Sunflower Processing Plant east of Velva, that was later purchased by Archer Daniels Midland and crushes canola today. In 1990, the cooperative saw major growth. Varendry began serving the Choice Hotel's call center, Minot Milling, and several other businesses that started because of Minot's economic development efforts. Since 2008, Varendry's growth has exploded because of oil industry growth in western North Dakota. The cooperative went from 11,000 meters served in 2008 to 15,000 meters at the end of 2013, a whopping 38% increase. New accounts included homes and apartments, and scores of hotels, retail shops, and oil-related businesses like Enbridge, Hess, and Halliburton. Who would have believed in 1939 that Vrendry Electric would be serving 16 motels in the city of Minot? Dakota Square Shopping Mall, banks, uh, McDonald's, uh, truly an honor. So, a diversified membership is a good membership, and an informed membership is a strong membership. We appreciate each and every one of you. Growth has provided opportunities for the cooperative, but it has also faced disasters. The two most notable being the 1983 ice storm and the 2011 Suris River flood. Even today, that ice storm holds the record for causing the most damage to Verendry's system, knocking out 2,200 poles and taking down 122 miles of power lines. In true co-op fashion, during that 1983 ice storm, members helped restore power by using bats and axe handles to beat ice off of downed power lines. Although the 2011 flood didn't cause the same volume of damage to Verendry's system as the ice storm, it was one of the worst disasters to affect cooperative members. The historic flood affected nearly 1,000 Verendry members, with approximately 670 losing power for some period of time. Velva was saved from flooding, but Verendry Electric had built a massive dike around its office just in case. A year later, Verendry Electric called and the other electric cooperatives from across the state to help Minot citizens. Together, they rewired facilities in the city's beloved Oak Park. Whether it is restoring outages or maintaining the systems, technology has greatly improved over the years, and today, the cooperative is on the cutting edge of technology. All circuits, single phase and three phase, coming out of all substations is remotely operated with a breaker uh, switch in, in Velva, right in the dispatch center. All meters, regardless of where you're located, are smart meters, so we can get your meter reading remotely and interrogate it to see, in fact, if you do have power. It all helps with uh, reducing outage time and, again, in the very sincere effort to provide reliable electrical power. Whether you live in Vrendry, you're the uh, base commander up at uh, the Minot Air Force Base, or whether you're a rancher uh, down by McCluskey in Lincoln Valley. Vrendry's founders likely didn't foresee the advanced technology or co-op growth, but if they were here today, they would see how the cooperative spirit of working together has endured. That spirit of working together is why members can call their cooperative and talk to a local person, or walk into an office to pay a bill, or voice a concern in person. It is why members have a voice in the operation of the cooperative by voting at their annual meeting, and it is why the cooperative operates on a non-profit basis, allowing it to return capital credits to its members. Verendry Electric is committed to the communities it serves. Many of its members contribute to a fund called Operation Roundup that gives money to local causes. 
Employees also take an active role in volunteering in their communities and working with local leaders to create opportunities for everyone. Verendry Electric Cooperative is owned by members like you, and your involvement and support is critical. Stay involved, attend the co-op's annual meetings, learn about Verendry, and consider serving on the Member Advisory Committee or running for the Board of Directors. Together, we can continue to build the dream that started 75 years ago in the tiny town of Verendry. <laughs>